Cruz is the constitutionalist, not Trump. Uh, he keep, keep, Trump's not a constitutionalist. He, he's not. Well, Ted Cruz has missed the Constitution. Why isn't he in Oregon? Why does he put down the debate to, uh, whenever and run out there to be in solidarity with the men who are arrested? Uh, go join them on a hunger strike. Why hasn't he? Then I might take, then I might take him seriously. Nobody's actually stood up and acted. Well, okay, I'm the only one talking about it. Have you heard it? Have you heard anyone else talk about it on the radio? I haven't. Not one word. But I am, because I know how significant this is. This is a peaceful American protest, a shot dead in America by the Oregon State Police. This should be a federal investigation, and if, if uh, the Attorney General refuses to do it, we should go to the United Nations for an investigation to find the officer who killed him. I may start a defense fund. Probably not. Maybe I will. I'm going to make a commitment right now on this show. Those poor guys don't have any money. Those poor white guys, those ranchers who stood up, they're not rich guys. They're not from New York. They don't have condominiums in their back pockets that they can sell in order to, uh, to, to face off against this evil government. When the time comes, and it's not today, I will set up a box on michaelsavage.com and will raise money for their defense fund. I don't make any money off these things. It'll go right to their lawyers. I'll help them. I've done it for soldiers. I've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for soldiers. I don't often boast about it. I gave a car away to a, a soldier with the dog. I don't boast about it. I've given money to police who are in trouble. I don't boast about it. But I'm going to do this for them because it's part of what I usually do on this show. That's okay. Don't, you know, you know what's happening to me lately? I'm paying too much attention to a part of my head that has my critics' voices in them. I don't really care about them. I have to go back to who I am and just do what I do. I am so sick and tired of being attacked and being bitten by the little chickens in the barnyard. I'm sick of it. The little chickens who peck at my feet, I don't want to hear them anymore. They're yakking little beaks walking around in, 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 in the chicken coop. And yet I hear them, and I shouldn't even hear them. I should only hear me. The only feedback I want is you. I'm going to raise money for these poor guys in Oregon. It's that simple. Okay, if you want to talk about that, you want to talk about the Fox debate, which I think there's nothing to say until we see if he does it. My headline says it all. Government executes peaceful protest and not in Iran but Oregon. It's on michaelsavage.com. Savage says quarantine all travelers from Zika-infested nations. Just by chance? How is this even possible? Michael Savage just released a book. Uh, it's an e-book called Diseases Without Borders. Savage says, quarantine all travelers from Zika-infested nations. How to boost your immune system against diseases, from the flu and measles to tuberculosis. Michael Savage says, uh, this is all a result of unregulated immigration and a politicized public health system. Michael Savage sees the need for some changes, starting with the president and the Center for Disease Control telling us the truth. Michael Savage makes his case for the government to enforce travel bans, the use of quarantines and the importance of proper border screenings. It's all in that little book. And I would say to liberals, please don't read it. Please do not read anything I have to say about bolstering your immune system against the Zika virus if you are progressive. I, I pray you don't read the book. I pray that you are as stupid as I think you are and that you'll put your politics ahead of your reason as you normally do. W sounded like Michael Savage and now he's sounding more like Jeb Bush. He's engaging in politics 101. He's kneecapping his rival like uh, Tanya Harding. And uh, I, 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 I don't care about him missing the, uh, that uh, Fox debate because it's a dog and pony show. But I would like to see him uh, debate uh, Ted Cruz one-on-one -on -one where he threw down the, uh, the gauntlet and they could both go at each other in a, uh, in a, a fair... Uh, no, no, I want to see Trump debate Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see an internecine warfare where we wind up flaming out because they rip each other to pieces. Both of these men are good men. Both of these men are too smart. And to pit them against each other is pure evil and pure stupidity. Whoever came up with that idea is a moron. Why would you pit two leaders against each other in the same party when there's so much at stake unless you want to put yourself ahead of everything? Is for the city. No, you want to debate Hillary Clinton and you want to debate the winner of the Democrat Party. You don't want them to kill each other. That's the stupidest thing I could ever think of.
You take two men from the same team and say, go into the arena and tear each other apart, and whoever's left standing, then you go as an injured man against Hillary Clinton? That's brilliant. That's a brilliant strategy if you want to destroy the Republican Party and the conservative chances. And I rest my case. I'll be back. Issue of immigration, Mr. Trump. Every day, another story about Muslim refugees in Europe raping, murdering. Yesterday, a refugee stabbed a Swedish so social worker who tried to help this boy. She, he stabbed her to death. 400,000 new immigrants from Somalia pouring into Italy. What would you do to reverse Obama's flooding of America with violent and diseased immigrants? I know it's a tough question, but this is the number one issue on Americans' minds. Not a tough question for me at all. Number one, I wouldn't have them come in, but if I win, I'm going to send them back. And I told everybody, <laughs> sending them back. They have to go back. We have no idea where these people came from. They're young, they're strong. In many cases, they're men's. When you look at the migratory lines, when you look at the big migration, so many men, so many strong men, you almost say, why aren't they back fighting for their country? Mm. We have no idea where they come from, Michael. We have to send them back. We have no choice. We have a country that's a mess. Look what's happening to Germany. Look what's happening to no. Brussels, places that never even thought of this stuff. And I don't know what's wrong with their leaders. At least we're not oh. the only ones that have terrible leaders. I mean, what's wrong with their leaders? They're destroying Europe. Yes. And now, it's that a was terrible... a direct answer. That was yesterday. No one heard it, apparently. None of the geniuses in the, in the media heard it. No one on the conservative side, no, no great conservatives heard that. All we hear is that Trump's not a conservative. He was as clear as a bell. He's as clear as a bell what he's going to do. So that's the important point is what he will do. I have faith that he would do it. That's the difference. I don't have faith that any others not only would but could do it. You know, and then there's the issue of, oh, he gets along with Schumer. I wanted to talk about that for a minute. That's how Congress works, by the way, is you get along with the other side. You, you work out a deal with them. If you will recall, many years ago there was a, a, a proposal by your great leader, George Bush, to turn over all of the security for all of our ports to a group in Dubai. It was called the Dubai Ports Deal, D-U-B-A-I. Some of you who know this show know that I stopped the Dubai port deal single-handedly at great risk to myself. I lobbied against turning over port security to a group in Dubai for obvious reasons, but it wasn't obvious to the doofuses in the Bush administration. And take a guess who came on this show and agreed with me. Chuck Schumer. I'm sure we could find that tape. I reached out across the aisle and I said, politics makes strange bedfellows. I said, Mr. Schumer, welcome to the Savage Nation. It was the first time, last time he's ever been on. I think he was quite surprised to agree with me. But he was a big enough man to come on this show. And he said he would work against the Dubai port deal because he thought it was dangerous for America. If I'm not mistaken, this was before 9-11. I don't even remember when it happened. Um... No, that was 01. It has to be after that. Well, I don't know when it was, the Dubai Ports deal. I have to look it up. The point I'm making is, is that I reached out to, to Chuck Schumer, and with him, we were able to stop the Dubai Ports deal. That's exactly what Trump was talking about. So again, all of you purists who say, oh, we don't have to reach across the aisle. Well, what country do you live in, Iran? What, do you just shoot the opposition, you idiots, you? What world are you living in? LBJ reached across the aisle, and he got things done. I don't agree with what he did, but he knew how to get things done. That's who Trump is. A deal maker, morons. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language. Adult content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael it Savage. is The Savage Nation. So the left is winning. They've got exactly what they want, which is uh, the 
the the conservative or Republican vote is now split, attacking Trump or attacking Cruz. That's exactly what they want. And now to and make matters even worse, uh, it's been suggested that Cruz and Trump attack each other, rip each other to pieces, and whoever's injured and left standing then go into the general against Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders or whoever. That makes great sense. That's true strategic brilliance. Now, we also hear criticism against Donald Trump that he's a dealmaker. What, what stupidity? That, that's a criticism? That he's a dealmaker? That's how Congress works. The problem is we don't have a dealmaker. We have people who capitulate to the Democrats. That's not dealmaking. A deal is made when you get what you want or as much as you can get out of what you want rather than nothing, which is what the Republicans have been taking, less than zero. A dealmaker takes a deal, and he builds his building. May not be as tall as he wants it to be. It may not be as deep as he wants it to be, but he builds the building. And you idiots, you purists say, hey, he made a deal. He didn't build that building he said he would build. It was only 110 stories. We wanted a 200-story building. We're purists. You schmucks, you're the ones who don't know anything. You never did anything in your life. You don't own a business. All you do is talk and sit on the Internet. Keyboard warriors, microphone warriors, never owned a business. Never worked in the private sector. Trump lives in the real world. That's what we need. And uh, I told you that I walked across the aisle. I told you that. I told you over and over again. It was a Dubai Ports deal from 2006. Thank you, Peter Chalka, for finding it for me, one of my listeners. He looked it up on Wikipedia. I can't, I'm trying to open it. Here it is. I'm sure I'm not even in it. No. I don't exist. I'm one of the only people who doesn't exist who has great effect in the United States of America. Those who expressed opposition to the deal included the New York Times, Michael Savage, Lindsey Graham, the New Republic, the John Birch Society, Sean Hannity, Lou Dobbs, Laura Ingram, Bill First, Frist, and Hillary Clinton. Prominent politicians from two different parties, Bob Menendez, John Gibson, John Corzine, and Peter King. Senator Barack Obama stated his opposition to the deal. That's great. So did Senator Levin and John Kerry. So you see, there was a deal made. Because we all opposed it for logical reasons at the time, which were security concerns. Security concerns, security concerns, security concerns. We all joined together to sink the deal. That was a good point in America. Do you understand what I'm saying? I reached across the aisle to uh, Charles Schumer. He came on the show. He brought it to uh, national attention, and he sank the deal. And we fought DP World. It was a company owned by the government of Dubai and the UAE. It was a holding company. This holding company is, was under the direct control of the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, who was also the prime minister of the UAE. And I said, this is insanity to turn over port security <laughs> to folks in Dubai at a time like this. Well, I was right. In fact, in 05, Coast Guard intelligence officials raised the possibility of security risks associated with the management of some U.S. port ops by a Dubai company. I agreed with them. And so I stepped in and started to make a big, big deal out of it. I had a huge stink out of it, bigger than all of them. But my point is not to take credit for stopping it, but to show you that I had Charles Schumer on the Savage Nation in 06. And I said, I said, Mr. Uh, um, I forget, Mr. Schumer, I said, Senator Schumer, politics makes strange bedfellows welcome to the Savage Nation. He was very gentlemanly about it. And we worked together, me and the media, him and Congress, and the rest is history. That's how a country survives. That's a nation at its best. Not saying the other side shouldn't be hurt at all, or doing a deal that is no deal, a total capitulation to Obama and Harry Reid. That's not a deal. That's capitulation. So if Trump is a deal maker, which he is, he'll reach across the aisle and make sure we get a fair deal. That's all. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. And you can call on any topic. What's this now? I'm, I'm looking at another story thrown at me during the show. Uh, before he boarded a plane for Iowa yesterday, 126, GOP presidential hopeful Donald Trump spoke to Westwood One syndicated talker Michael Savage who told the Republican frontrunner that he hoped Trump wouldn't show up 
at tomorrow night's Fox News Channel GOP candidates debate. And shortly thereafter, 